as I said, you know, we've <coughs> had uh, MCB report a pre-tax profit up 31% for the full year. And speaking to market commentators, they're certainly impressed because this was achieved in spite of the tough financial conditions that persist. How have you been weathering the storm? What have been the driving forces behind the numbers that have come through here? Our underlying increase in um, profit was 14.3%. Um, and then we had two or three um, non-recurring items. They used to be called exceptional items. Mm -hmm. They're now called non-recurring income that took the increase up to 31.6%. So if we focus on the underlying business, we've seen very good growth in um, our loan portfolio. We've seen good growth in our non-interest income, particularly trade finance. We have a very um, good and developing strategy vis-a-vis -vis, um, a number of uh, banks in sub largely sub-Saharan Africa. And we're, we have a very good presence in the Indian Ocean. And we're also beginning to do things on the back of this strong flow of foreign direct investment into India mm -hmm. and China. Mauritius is a very significant investor into India. This is the money that comes from funds in Europe and America. It comes through Mauritius and then takes advantage of the network of double taxation treaties that Mauritius yeah. has. So, so for all those reasons, our business has expanded, we think, at a, at a, at a good, good rate. 10 to 12, 14 percent growth is, is certainly manageable. And we've completed some very important investment projects that, we'll that, that enable the bank to grow. We'll go into some of those projects mm. moving forward. Mm. Uh, but that the year that was. Question out there right now is mm. whether it's sustainable going forward. Uh, you know, is this kind of momentum that the markets have been getting used to something that they should, you know, sh that they should become accustomed to moving forward? Um, we have a very strong franchise in Mauritius. With a, with a dominant bank in Mauritius, we have 45% market share. And this is a real privilege because on the retail side, which is about 40% of the bank's revenues, we have yet to strongly increase the number of products per customer. So mm -hmm. we feel that as long as we're bringing out new products and we're paying attention to our customers, we can increase the product penetration ratio from just under three to four, five, best in class managed to get seven or eight. So we, we think that despite the strong market share in our retail business, we can still increase that business steadily. And, 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 and that is a, is a real source of strength for the bank. On the corporate side, we have seen a, a, a slowdown in, in private sector capital formation and new projects coming through. I mean, two or three years ago, just before the Lehman's um, event, um, the hotel industry was at 100% occupancy, and that gave them great optimism to invest strongly for additional capacity. That additional capacity has now come on stream, and so they're pausing for breath before embarking on the next round of capacity addition to make sure that the existing capacity is fully utilized. And that takes time. It's not an instant thing. That so to what extent is that low level of investment within the Mauritian economy, mm. uh, you know, within that corporate space, mm. an issue for Mauritius Commercial Bank right now, or is it just you know, a blip that you've got to ride out? We think it's a blip that we just have to ride out. Um, the government is doing its bit to step into the space by, by, by upping levels of um, public infrastructure. For, and um, it's quite noticeable that the airport is being expanded to accommodate a much larger number of planes in line with the, the vision of the country to increase its tourist numbers. There's a huge amount of road building going on, um, new hospitals. So the country is, you know, there's a lot of offices going up in the Eben office park, which is just south of Port Louis. Yeah. Shopping centers have arrived in Mauritius. There's, there's a half a dozen new shopping centers and ShopRite and Pick and Pay, the South African um, retailers, are, are, as well as uh, Mr. Price, are, are now present in, in, in Mauritius. So. The thing about Mauritius is it's a $10 billion economy. So GDP per capita is about $8,500. And things start to happen in a country when you start to approach the $10,000 per capita GDP. People start buying motor cars. They start um, buying consumer durables. And the country has enough money to invest in, in infrastructure. So Mauritius is changing quite, quite noticeably. Of course, that's your assessment of mm. the Mauritian economy right now, or part of it anyway. Mm. Uh, you know, when it comes to monetary policy right now, what's your assessment on that end? Because we've got all eyes on central banks globally. Yeah. And I'm sure the Bank of Mauritius and its policy has been held under just as much scrutiny at this stage of the game. I think they've got it just about right. They dropped the repo rate by 100 basis points, some would say courageously, last August, September. Um, and it's now gone up recently to 5.5%, um, which was a rise of 25 basis points. And at its recent meeting in September, they kept it on hold. Inflation is about 6%. So it's a far cry from the numbers we've just been hearing about in Uganda, um, with inflation at 28% and a, and a spike in their 
um, repo rate to 20 percent. So I think the Bank of Mauritius has got its monetary policy about right in terms of restraining inflation without making it difficult f for companies that are borrowing money to have to pay a much higher interest cost. So I, I think all other things being equal, um, they've managed to restrain inflation without inhibiting growth yes. in the country. Oh Well, it's within this context that you're operating. And, and as you highlighted, you're still the biggest bank by market capitalization mm. in uh, the Indian Ocean. What's the competitive landscape you're operating in right now? Um, we have two banking industries in Mauritius. One is the domestic industry with about nine, ten banks. Mm -hmm. And then there's the offshore, the what's called the global business industry, which handles this flow of foreign direct investment predominantly into India and China, but also from those two countries into Africa. Mauritius is, is fast becoming a, a Singapore equivalent of an offshore jurisdiction to handle these foreign investment flows. As far as the domestic landscape is concerned, we have about 45% market share. State Bank of Mauritius has 20 to 25% and Barclays 10 to 15%. Mm. So those three banks control 80% plus of the market and then there's another half dozen, seven, eight banks that are fighting over the remaining 15% market yeah. share. In the global business sector, HSBC is the dominant franchise, followed by um, Standard Bank and Standard Chartered Bank. Barclays is also active in that sector. We entered it in a small way two or three years ago and it's already proving to be quite an interesting area for us because we can apply our, our efficient processing, our handling of bank mm -hmm. accounts and payments and, and transfers together with our relationship approach to doing business. And what we're finding is that we're getting very good lending opportunities both uh, on the origination side of this flow of foreign direct investment as well as on the destination side. And that's very interesting. Everybody knows India is, an, is a country in total transformation with infrastructure renewal. And there's some very interesting lending opportunities to do associated well, with that. Well, certainly progress that we'll be keeping an eye on. Anthony, thanks so much for your time this afternoon.